I would also like to ask though that as the webinar is going on, if you have questions, to please put those questions in the Q&A section, not the chat, uh, and that way we are able to see which ones have been asked and answered and can make sure that we clear those all out. Teresa, I think if you'd like to start, you can go ahead. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, my name is Teresa Metzger, an administrator with Housing and Dining Services. And so um, the next kind of several um, minutes or so, I'm gonna do a presentation on what international students can expect for housing options living on campus. Um, I'll go over a little bit of off-campus stuff as well, but I'm focusing mostly on our residence halls and apartments on campus. So welcome. Um, it's morning here in um, Fort Collins in Colorado, but if you're uh, watching this another time zone, which is very likely, um, welcome. And um, if you're watching it later, um, hope everything is well. So we'll get started um, with the presentation. So um, housing in the U.S. and at CSU, just kind of want to give you some baseline of information um, of what sort of we offer um, and what is a little bit going on in our community. So um, for our housing, first year undergrads are required to live in the residence hall. So any first year student who is an undergraduate student, they are required to live on campus. Um, but one of the things I want to share is that there are limited, limited on campus apart apartments, um, apartment options. And so one of the things I do want to stress is as you are going through the process of deciding to come to the US and uh, CSU particularly, if you have an opportunity to make a, a decision sooner rather than later, I think that is helpful in your options to get housing on campus or around the CSU area. So just want to put that out there in the beginning. I know that there are lots of details that you'll have to figure out, um, but the sooner you wait, the sooner you um, decide to come to CSU and apply to housing, the better or more options you'll have on campus and potentially off campus. Um, housing is not guaranteed for any returning students, so anyone after their first year in the undergraduate um, uh, program, a, a transfer student or graduate student. So think about that if you are um, transferring as an undergraduate or if you're a graduate student, it's not guaranteed housing um, like we have for our first year undergraduate students. And so individual students must arrange um, their housing independently. So um, if an academic program talks about housing and say, oh, that's something that um, we'll be taking care of, just know that that still means that you need to apply on your own through your housing application on campus or if you decide to go off campus. And one of the things to be aware of is that housing in Fort Collins is in high demand. And so if you are looking for a little bit more support, some of that off-campus housing, we do have an office called Off-Campus Housing Options, and that's OCL colostate.edu. And then if you're looking for more information about on-campus housing, um, that is housing.colostate.edu. So you can refer back to that and go to those websites um, for more reference if you're looking for specific details. So more information about that. Um, most student housing is rented by the bedroom and not the unit or apartment. So something to be aware of that if you're sort of an individual student. Um, but if you are looking for family or multifamily housing, um, that is rented by unit. So just something to be aware of. Um, and all those sort of extra costs like um, utilities, trash removal, um, TV service, things like that. Those are extra costs to be um, aware of. So it's not usually when you're looking off campus, it's not usually included. Um, again, OCL Off Campus Life can give you lots of support and information. They happen to have um, a list of apartments who work really well with um, international students that don't require um, a social security number um, with that application process. So it's a really great resource to work with them as well. 
So some of the things that when you think about um, what's included in a furnished apartment, um, things like sofa, chair, desk, um, a bed, dining table, chairs, refrigerator, stove, sometimes a microwave. Um, what's not included are things like bedding, sheets, towels, rugs, dishes, pots and pans, things like that. Um, also our, with our CSU parking and transportation, um, there is a fee for parking. Um, there's various different parking lots based on where you live um, or what your needs are for um, your car. So sometimes if you wanna live in, or you wanna park your car for a remote lot, because you have less um, need to drive around. Sometimes that's a little bit cheaper. So just things to be thinking about. And then another thing to be aware of is that there's no smoking um, in on-campus housing. And I would say most off-campus apartments and housing um, also are no smoking. Um, one thing you might've heard about um, Colorado, the state of Colorado is that we do, um, marijuana is legal, but be aware that just even though it's a state and legal federal um, allowing you to, to smoke marijuana, there still is no um, any type of marijuana um, allowed in the halls um, or in CSU policy. So just know that there's no smoking of any kind and marijuana use is not allowed under CSU policy. So something to be aware of as well. Teresa, it's actually not allowed under federal policy. So right, that's correct. It is not federal. Thank you for reminding me of that. So under our federal um, um, higher education, that is not allowed in any of the um, state institutions and most, I would say, um, private institutions don't allow it as well. So just, just be aware, um, even though there are places in the state that you're allowed to, marijuana is not allowed under federal and, and um, higher education. So thank you for that reminder. I don't know why I said that wrong. All right, so why would you wanna stay on campus? I would say the, the biggest reasons why are just the location, to be able to walk just across the street to campus. Um, there's uh, buses that take you quick right onto campus. Um, so the location is really prime to get you access to campus and also to sort of be part of the CSU community. There's also lots of academic support, um, whether you're an undergraduate or graduate student, we just really have lots of resources that are really helpful for you. Um, one thing I do want to just remind folks is to put questions um, into the Q&A, as we had said earlier, um, and uh, the looks like uh, Rama has already started to put some information in the, um, the chat as well, just for information for you all. Um, let's see, um, campus resources. So if you're needing to navigate campuses of uh, the campus, whether it's, um, you know, getting connected with international student services um, or other resources, campus security, um, we really are well connected. That's, we all work together. That's our collaborative nature. Um, also there's 24 seven security on campus, um, in the halls, the apartments, and also around campus. So we have really great um, partnerships. Um, I also think student employment is really a great opportunity. M many um, international students are um, working within our dining services um, and also um, within housing as well. So lots of opportunities for um, uh, students to find employment around campus. Also lots of academic programs um, employ students as well. And then academic success, saying students who live on campus tend to have um, better outcome and success because of the support that we provide and also accessibility to campus in general. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the residence hall options. Um, and these typically t tend to be for students who are living within um, the undergraduate students living in the residence hall. So just so you can look first, there is the suite style rooms, which are, these are two students, two double rooms that are next to each other that have a shared bathroom. And this is a, a toilet and a shower. There's lots of sort of storage right here. So this is um, a semi-private room um, and they have a shared bathroom. And then we have something called a community style room, which is two double, um, two rooms, two, two students living in a double room. And then there is a shared bathroom down the hallway. And that's typically about, um, 36 students who are um, kind of utilizing one large bathroom together. Um, students are of, often asking about um, the possibility of single rooms. Um, and we generally don't have a lot of single rooms for students. We do have single rooms for students who do have some sort of medical need for accessibility. Um, and students who do um, 
um, have an interest in learning about the single room based on a um, accessibility or a disability, um, you would work with our um, disability student resources. And so you would have to submit some of your documentation um, to apply for a single room. So just want to put that out there. There are generally less single rooms. Um, another question I'm often asked about is sort of what's the gender of our buildings. So um, our community style um, rooms uh, tend to be on all one single gender floor. And so this would be this room type um, by all women on one floor or all men on one floor. In these suite style rooms, this is one gender. So there would be all women in these suite style rooms and sharing the bathroom. And then, um, then there also would be um, all men in this room. And then on these floors of suite style rooms, you could have one full suite style um, of women, but then next door you could have men um, on that same um, uh, floor who are um, next door but not sharing the bathroom. So, um, so that's one of the things to be aware of. And so there's a question there about um, are the um, communities specifically for international students? Um, typically, there isn't um, just, you know, one one building of international students, but we do have some spaces in Parmalee Hall that are geared more towards international students. So that's something to look into. Also, Parmalee Hall um, has a 12 month um, uh, uh, what do you call it, lease. So you can stay in that space for over breaks and things like that. So sometimes students are looking, international students are looking to be in Parmalee Hall because of um, the international um, students living in that community and also because of the 12 month leases. So great question. All right, so next, um, just to tell you a little bit more about how our um, residence hall assignments, the fall application um, will open in early 2025, so in January. And so the application timeline um, in the early spring, that January through April, basically we're looking for you to fill out um, your general information um, about what you're looking for, kind of give us a, what room types you're interested in. Um, you'll also need to pay for a deposit to complete that application. And then starting in April, late spring, we'll go through this roommate request process. So if you happen to know who you want to room with, you can actually easily pull them in. But if you don't know who your roommate is, we have a, a mechanism through our um, um, roommate app or, or housing application process where you actually can find a roommate. So if you're looking for another student from um, where you're coming from um, or if you're looking to um, meet other students in the U.S., you can kind of do some texting or messaging back and forth to find a roommate, talk to them about um, some of the things that are important to you or um, if you have similar majors, um, similar schedules, things like that. Then after we finalize roommates, which usually closes around June, um, end of June and July, then we go through the building and room selection with your roommate. So you and your roommate are given an appointment. And during that time, you um, select the room and the building that you want to live in. And there are some learning communities that are connected to majors or different um, types of um, academic interest as well. Um, so question is for clarity, are on-campus apartments considered um, on-campus housing? So yes, they are. I'm going to talk about that next. Um, there are on-campus housing that is part of our um, part of our um, what we offer on on-campus. So after I talk about the residence halls, I'll talk a little bit more about on-campus apartments. So thank you for clarifying. And if you want to look at more information um, about the residence halls, you can go to this website um, and they'll give you more information about each individual residence halls the rates and the amenities in each of those halls. So great question so far. So kind of talking a little bit um, about dining, um, we have weekly meal plans that are included with all the um, uh, the uh, options for living on campus. And so it's a weekly meal plans, any 15 meals, 19, 19 plus. Um, and then you can also add any kind of additional, um, you know, uh, additional meals with this 19 plus. So if you happen to have 19 plus, that's 26 additional um, swipes per week. And every meal includes 10 bonus meals. So just in case you happen to go over um, through that weekly uh, meal plan and also $200 of Ram Cash. And Ram Cash is, can be used for vending machines, getting coffee at coffee shops, um, some incidentals, like if you have to pay for parking one day or need to use um, purchase something at the library like printing. Um, those are sort of, sort of the ways that you use Ram Cash. Um, the dining centers are available from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. seven days per week. So you'll be able to use your dining center um, all 
all through all of our dining center areas seven days a week. Um, a little bit about nutrition. Um, if you want to go on our website, you can see what some of our current menus are um, at this csumenus.nutrislice.com. And we have um, something called Eat Well Labeling. So basically, um, online and also in the dining centers, we um, provide labeling that provides um, what types of ingredients, um, protein, um, if something is gluten-free, um, all sorts of uh, details to kind of give you some ideas of what is in our menu. You can also filter based on certain menus um, items as well. Um, we provide vegan, vegetarian, um, gluten, and allergy-free op um, options as well. And about 25% of our food is served that is local or organic. So um, lots of different local options as well. Um, also have a registered dietitian on staff. So if you do want to meet with someone um, to talk a little bit about your food options. Um, in addition, we also have um, halal all options for students um, as well. So moving on to talk a little bit about on-campus apartments. So this kind of lends to the question that was just asked. So we have on-campus apartments. Um, so a um, couple of different options. We have Aggie Village, which is a little bit of a newer um, facility. And these are fully furnished apartments. And there's also for single undergraduate or graduate um, single um, student housing. So this is an area that's not for families. They're individual leases by the room. And so we offer a studio, which is basically sort of a large open space that includes an apart um, a kitchen and um, laundry, things like that. But then also a one bedroom, uh, two bedroom, three or four bedroom apartments. They all include um, air conditioning, a dishwasher, uh, washer and dryer. Um, they're all walking distance to campus, and these are rented by the Red Room with shared um, uh, kitchens and baths. So kind of gives you a little bit of sense of sort of the space right there with the um, double bed right there, a study space, and some closet space around here as well. All right. So we also have the International House. This is a fully furnished um, apartment, and this is available for single undergraduate or single um, graduate students, but you have to be 21 years or older. Um, there are one bedroom or two bedroom options. Um, this is kind of west of campus, so um, you'll have to kind of cross um, a street to get to campus for this, um, but there's a bus that makes it easily available, also very easily walkable, um, or taking a bike um, across campus, and this is rented by the bedroom, and it also has the shared kitchen and bath. You can see there's a picture of it as well. It's a large parking lot that's also connected to this um, uh, facility. Um, Aggie family, so this is either, the two options are furnished or unfurnished apartments, and this is family housing only. So um, we offer this to um, students who are coming with um, kids or partners, our family. And so this is something that um, we don't rent out to individual students. Um, it has a front door access only, so you're not going through um, a facility or a large um, uh, sort of uh, building. It's all open um, to the outside. Um, and there's two story, story buildings. Um, there are two bedroom apartments. And again, this is south of campus, and these are rented by the apartment unit. It does include a kitchen and one bath. So it kind of gives you a sense of the, the picture of it with some green space that's connected for outdoor accessibility. And also there's like playgrounds and things like that for kids as well. So we also have University Village. Um, and as you can see, um, kind of a two-story, um, two-level townhouse type of um, setup. So these are furnished and unfurnished apartments are well as well. We offer this to single graduate students um, or family housing. So both of those options. Um, there's multiple floor options. It's a townhouse style. There's two levels. So there's bedrooms um, and bath on the upstairs. Um, there's two to th two or three bedroom options. It's again, west of campus. So crossing um, campus for a little bit of a walk or bicycle, there's also a bus to take you, but still very walkable to campus. Um, and this is rented by the um, apartment or unit and it includes kitchen and one bath. So if you want to, um, you are you do have the option of a meal plan, although it's not required for students who are living in the apartments to have a meal plan. And so you can um, purchase as many or few meals as you want as a, in a block of five. It tends to be more cost efficient if you buy more um, uh, meals all at once and it's charged to your student account um, or you can pay with a credit card and gives you access to all of our dining centers, 
our marketplaces, um, um, and express locations. So just something to be aware of. Um, it's not required, but it's also the benefit is to have access. Um, it's an all you care to eat swipe system. So you swipe in and just eat what is needed. Um, sometimes people like to go there to meet with other students, study, um, or just kind of um, relax because it is closer to campus. So you can um, be close to campus instead of going um, back to campus if you wanted to make a meal in your apartment. So I also want to talk a little bit about transportation. I've talked a little bit about this. Um, CSU and um, the city of Fort Collins is very bike friendly. And so we're a platinum bike friendly university. Um, over 23,000 um, bikes are registered, um, lots of bike racks. Um, we do want to make sure that people are locking them up and um, making sure they're watching for their bikes because we do have a little bit of bike theft on campus. So that is something to be aware of. We also have great support for bikes, um, bike um, shops and repairs that you can do right on campus. Also included with your student fees is your RAM card, it's your bus pass. And so that gives you access to the Around the Horn, which is the, the campus bus system, but it also gives you access to Transport, which is also um, the um, city uh, bus system as well, which is included with your um, fees for going to CSU. So the bus is a great option to kind of get around town, um, uh, get to grocery stores or um, other locations. So I think the bus is a really great option. Also, we have something called a zip car. And so this is something where you get a subscription. Um, you get access with a card that you can um, basically you know, swipe in, um, unlock the door, and you can rent it for two hours at a time. Let's say if you need to run errands um, or if you have an appointment on the other side of town. So it's really good for sort of local, um, you know, trips that you need to take across campus. And then of course you are um, able to bring um, a personal vehicle to campus. It's a year round um, campus permit um, is required with limited parking. There is some parking that is close to the apartments and that paid permit is required uh, to park on campus. So just some information for people who have families that we do have the public school system for K through 12. And so um, this listing right here basically goes through the, the schools that are connected in the locations where our um, our uh, apartments are located. So definitely can help you with that as you uh, make decisions or get assigned to housing um, on which school that you have um, access to um, living in those locations. So this is... Um, um, good to know. And also their pre-K also may be um, available for some other programs for um, students um, uh, for kindergarten or, you know, pre-kindergarten uh, as well. So many of the schools are one mile away um, that um, you can walk to or ride your bike, but then there also is bus service for students that are more than one mile away and those schools that are a little bit further out. So some other resources that I wanted to share are basic needs resources. So um, just knowing that we have our CSU food pantry um, that's through a Rams Against Hunger. So um, basically it's a um, pantry that you can do grocery shopping free of charge um, through um, the um, Larimer um, Food Bank, Larimer County Food Bank. And so that's open to students and community members um, to, for grocery shopping free of charge. We also have in within our University Village and Aggie Family apartment area, um, some pocket pantries. So those are just sort of grab and go, um, quick meals, um, things that are staples for people to, um, you know, take if they need um, a little extra help with some um, staples for food um, throughout the week. And then we also have a program called RAM Recovery. So it's a texting notification if we happen to have a catered event um, where we have extra food, we send out a text to students um, to let them know that, um, hey, we had an event um, over um, in the apartment area um, and we wanted to let you know that um, bring your um, you know, Tupperware or extra storage um, containers, um, bring some food um, that's left over and you can have that. Um, and we usually do that like for 15 minutes to half an hour. Um, usually food goes quick, so something to be aware of that. And then we also have something called case management. So if you're finding yourself in a little bit of financial hardship, um, they can help assist with um, any kind of programs or assistance um, to help you with any kind of financial hardship that comes up. This is a, a picture of the, um, of the uh, pantry that we um, have some of the um, cold items, eggs, milk, um, also lots of vegetables and things like that. Um, and it's opened um, daily throughout the week. 
So just some details about the application process. Let me just pause one second. There's a question. Um, so is Aggie Village the only apartment housing available for single students under 21? That is correct. So Aggie Village is the best bet for that. Um, international um, house is for a little bit over the 21. Um, and so with the how many students are shared in the um, bathroom and kitchen, within Aggie Village, it's just the people who are in your apartment. So if it's one bedroom, two bedroom, it could be up to four students who are sharing that kitchen with you. Um, in the residence halls, there is a kitchen, and that's basically a large kitchen that is on each floor. So that's all the students on the floor um, who are sharing that kitchen as well. So good questions about access to kitchens. So the application process, um, you must be admitted to CSU first. And so once you commit and enroll to CSU, then you fill out your housing application. Um, we recommend that you um, complete your application as soon as possible because that gives you um, more options and we actually assign housing based on your where you're at in the queue. So you must pay the deposit um, to complete the application and be in the queue. So the sooner the better um, because it's a first come first serve situation. If you have any issues that come up with your housing application, be sure to um, how send us an email um, at colostate.edu. Um, also want to share that we do have um, something on our website. It's called the CAMBOT, and it's a, a messaging system. And so that can help um, as well. If you have um, questions that come up, you can text and chat with us um, to kind of uh, manage any questions that you have through that application process as well. So how to apply um, um, the housing deposit plus a non-refundable fee is required. Um, we're in the process of updating our housing deposit and um, fee um, process right now. So um, stay tuned to our website. We'll be updating that new um, deposit and fee cost. It should be coming soon. Um, Again, first first year undergraduate students are guaranteed housing, but um, non first year students, transfer students, graduate students um, are not guaranteed for housing. So um, the availability is limited as well. Um, and see, so when will spring 25 um, uh, applications be expected? I believe that you, I think they opened October 1st. So you actually can apply now if you're looking um, to start classes in spring 25 in January. So um, look on the website now to put in your housing application for any student who's thinking about starting in the spring. So great question, thank you. So again, um, the application does not guarantee housing um, availability or assignment. Um, just some other details about moving on campus for um, campus housing. Um, students should plan um, to check in um, between the hours of 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. Um, if for some reason your flight is delayed or arrival is after 10 p.m., um, the student can call our staff um, on duty to check in. There's usually a phone number that's posted um, within at the front door of every um, of every residence hall, um, but you must have a cell phone um, to ac access to do that. So occasionally, sometimes um, you can have family members um, help you with you send them a message through WhatsApp and then they can make a phone call um, to our cell phone. That's one of the ways I've heard students navigating that. Um, sometimes international programs can assist with that as well. Um, We'll also um, have some shuttles from DIA to get students to campus. Um, there'll be a contact call um, utilizing the WhatsApp or other kind of apps to make sure that you can connect with us and also um, international student um, services and programs for transportation to check in on campus. So other reminders, just that um, in addition to on-campus housing, um, off-campus life is a great resource, um, ocl.colostate.edu. They provide a lot of great housing resources. There is a rental search um, engine. Um, they also provide a list of all the apartment complexes. Um, also look into short-term and temporary housing. So if you need to sort of have a short-term housing while you're waiting for an apartment, um, that is sometimes a strategy that is helpful as well. And then they also help you with um, any kind of roommate meet and matching. They have some um, virtual programs that they do to help students find roommates um, if that is a need as well. Let's see here. So those are all the details. Again, um, you can go to our website. There's also the option to chat at housing.colostate.edu. Um, also email um, at housing at colostate.edu if you want to get more information. So um, we've had some great 
questions so far. And um, since we have a little bit of a smaller group, if you're interested, you can also come off of mute. I can answer your question live. Um, are also, let's see, can you put, review the last question again? So um, the question, I, I believe this is the last one, is um, when are spring 2025 applications or room allocations expected? So um, if you're looking to start in the spring, um, you can apply for housing now. And I guess just to be a little bit more detailed, I didn't say this, when do are those housing um, assignments made? They're usually made um, probably in the second week of January. So probably just a week before classes start. And the reason why it's a little bit delayed is we are waiting um, to kind of get final um, information about other students who either graduated and are moving out or if they've decided to transfer or leave campus. And so oftentimes, that happens around the first week of January. Students are moving out in the second week of January. So you are sometimes finding out just the week before um, classes start. So something to be aware of um, um, that we are um, making those sort of notices when you get your, your housing, um, usually the week before classes start. So, um, oh gosh, the, which housing is closest to the biology meet, um, buildings? You know, I would say if you're living um, in a residence hall, probably the closest would either be Allison Hall or Braden Hall. Um, but I would say any of the residence halls are between a five to 15 minute walk um, to the academic area. Um, if you are living in an apartment, I would say as far as a walk, it's probably 30 minute walk. But there is also, as I said, something called around the horn. It's a bus. I would say that would basically, you know, making sure that you know when the bus um, picks you up, that'll take you like 10 minutes to get to campus. Um, and again, of course, um, you know, driving to campus might be a little bit more difficult. Bicycle is also very quick, 15 minutes. So, so do we get notified, notified if we are not getting on-campus housing option? Yes, we make sure that we try to give you, um, and this is mostly when it comes to fall housing, about a six-week notice if we're not able to house you on campus. So, um, so that's helpful. Um, I would say physics um, department as well was similar to biology. Um, if you're looking at a campus map, um, there's more of an academic, academic core that's more east of campus. So um, residence halls, five to 15 minute walk, apartments, definitely more than a 30 minute walk um, on a bus, maybe 10 um, minutes getting there and then a bike, probably 10, 15 minutes. So um, check out the map. I'll probably add that um, again in the future, but um, check out the map. It'll give you a sense of sort of where the apartments are located, um, a little bit more of a distance across campus. All right, great questions. Um, anything else that I missed, Bronwyn, that you think I should have added? Um, maybe emphasizing just making sure that you can, um, if you have the ability to, um, apply and fill out your housing application sooner rather than later, that definitely increases your chances of getting housing on campus um, and also just the options of off campus as well. Yeah, and I think the other thing, Teresa, is maybe sharing um, why someone would want to apply now, maybe even before you have your visa, before you've secured your travel plans and what they can do specifically if their visa is denied or they have to postpone until the following semester. What then yeah, happens? Yes, thanks happens? for that clarity. So yeah, if, if for some reason you've gotten accepted and you're sort of um, still waiting to find out if your um, visa is cleared, um, it is it is good to um, to decide if you have the ability to enroll and then um, commit to CSU and um, housing, just because it does sort of give you, it secures their housing sooner. Um, the one thing I can share though is um, for students starting in the fall, um, if you let us know by May 1st that you are not attending CSU, um, then you would get a refund um, of, um, that, of most of your application feedback. We, we usually retain $50 um, for, um, um, and within the application, but the rest of that you would get back. So it's really helpful um, to be strategic that way because um, you could secure your housing um, in advance. Um, some students who have waited until July, let's say they wait as late as June or July, um, when they found out, they often will not get housing. And so I think that's one of the things that's a huge disappointment and creates lots of, lots of stress, particularly when you're coming to a new place and you don't know Fort Collins as well. So if you have the ability um, to, you know, 
uh, get that enrollment fee and your housing application in now, um, that does give you a lot more options um, to secure housing sooner rather than later um, before, before you even know that you have your visa. So um, we, we definitely can refund your application if you let us know earlier. So great, great point to make there. Other questions that are coming up? We will probably do another one of these um, in the spring, probably two more in the spring, one early spring and one later in the spring, potentially even a summer one. Um, but at the same time, now that you have this information, you actually don't need to wait for any more details. I don't think there'll be any additional information unless you have something specific to your sort of, um, you know, uh, particular um, question that you might have. So um, definitely, if you have the ability to apply, um, Starting in January, late January, I think it's January 25th that we'll probably open up our application. Um, I would go go ahead and do that if you if you have the ability to. We'll hang on a little bit longer and see if uh, there's anything else I can answer. Let's see if there's anything else. Um, if a student is starting in the spring, should they also apply now? Yeah, if you have the ability to apply now, I would go ahead and do that. I think it really would be helpful. Um, and again, um, we would give you a refund um, if you did not get um, a placement. Um, uh, so definitely, um, I would I would do that if you have the opportunity. Sometimes we have more availability in the um, spring, but at the same time, um, it's not guaranteed. So the six weeks is, a, is only, the question is around um, if you're arriving in January on campus, um, will you be informed six weeks before the start of classes? So in, in the spring, you will not. And the only reason why is because we don't know the our, sort of our availability. So you will find out probably in early January if you're not getting housing. So it's a little bit of a different situation. We'll let you know as soon, soon as possible um, if a space comes open. So it's a little bit different for the spring. Let's see, you made an application. Okay, yep, looks like we've gotten. I would say if you put in an application in July, that was with our last um, sort of housing um, cycle. So if you're trying to go in for January, I would go ahead and apply again. Um, basically, you can look up um, in your housing application, it probably shows that it's it has not um, um, gone through. You probably, can um, reapply um, and use that same deposit. So I would just log in again, but I would I would assume that that last application um, in July did not count for January um, this next semester. So you would need to reapply. Great questions, good details. I think the last thing that I can think of, and I know you've shared this in different ways, but if a student has a question after this session today, which is being recorded by the way, and will be sent out to you after. So if you have anything you wanna go back and reference, you will have access to that. But if they have a question after today, who should they contact? What is the best email for them to ask about their housing application? Yeah, um, I would go to this last slide, slide right here, go to the website. Um, you can also chat with us on the website. So there is a chat chat a chat mechanism or housing.colostate.edu um, where you can kind of get some detailed information there. But then you also can email through housing at colostate.edu. They're pretty good about getting back with you within a day with any kind of questions that you have. Thanks so much, everyone. Hopefully that was helpful. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, everyone. If you have any other questions, please reach out via email to housing, or if you have questions that are not about housing, you can always email ISSS at colostate.edu. We'll be sharing this recording after this event, um, and it'll go on our pre-arrival web page, um, but that will get emailed to all of you. So thank you all. Have a great rest of your day or good night, wherever you are, and we look forward to seeing you in the spring or at our next webinar. Thanks, everyone.